grew up playing guitar and then playing drums in a band and singing and like my whole environment was playing in bands and I was a singer in like a 10 piece jazz funk band whilst doing Flux like Pavilion and that was my focus. I was like, ah, oh, the band, this is just a thing that I have fun doing kind of thing. And I, I always viewed it as fun because there's no other way for me to look at electronic music because it's ultimate freedom, which as a producer and as a composer and a writer, you can't beat that really. I started seeing this tailor in the UK who's making me a couple of jackets, like it's really cool, like rock and roll tailor. Like you walk into his, I think his shop is in where Jimi Hendrix used to live in London. So you like walk in there and then he had a picture of um, the prodigy up on the wall. And I was like, what's that all about? He's like, oh yeah, I've made stuff for them as well. So we kept, we started talking about it. And then he sent me a text, probably, yeah, it must've been like a month before the track was done saying, Oh yeah, Liam just came in. Here's his email address if you want to hit him up. And I just, yeah, like dropped him an email straight away and he replied within five minutes. And I sent him some of my album stuff and he basically was like, ah, I wish that I'd heard your, this stuff before while I was writing my album and you could have got involved. And I had two days off and I was like, look dude, I've got two days off. 48 hours are yours. If you send me some parts right now, I'm not sleeping for two days and let's work on something. And that's pretty much what happened. It was completely out of nowhere. Just like, yeah, randomly my tailor just hit me, hits me up. It was like, oh cool. Here's his email address. Dovestep was the catalyst for what it is now. I kind of, I get asked that question a lot. Like, how do you feel about Dovestep growing into what it is now? I feel like Dovestep in itself, you know, it, it stopped growing at some point. And then artists like me and Dr. T and a whole bunch of us, we we remained, we carried on growing and Dubstep kind of stayed where it is. And I think like Dubstep caught up with all the other facets of electronic music. It was like a separate thing and it just, it caught up with everything else. started out in the UK there weren't like festivals wouldn't book us because they had no interest in what we were doing so the only place you could play was a club I feel like EDM as a as a core has kind of been born in the festivals essentially because it the the hugeness of what EDM kind of is is that it's that EDC main stage Swedish house mafia Avicii kind of sound like that's kind of what clubs feel like with this music and then the extension into festivals, I think that added quite a new dynamic, but it, it changed the way that I kind of thought about the music, because all of a sudden there was this massive, sometimes like 50 metre disconnect between me and the people. So it's like, I need to make the music that kind of like breaks down that barrier, essentially. Make the music feel like it's in a club when you're actually in an open air kind of area, which I feel is quite a, it was an, in, an interesting shift, but yeah, I definitely have been concentrating more on the club recently. The festival kind of vibe is a lot more, there's a lot more space to it. That you can let tracks kind of like exist for a bit longer. Whereas in the club, the feeling is more like quick, next track, next track. You try to keep it slamming, it's a completely different sort of approach. So I think as soon as I started playing festivals, it changed my, my outlook and just recently, I've started doing a lot more club shows again just to kind of rediscover what, was, what it was all about and the new record that I'm going to put out this year is basically it's a club orientated album. You know, dubstep is just uh, an easy way of describing stuff at 140, but it isn't all encompassing. It just kind of like, I think for us, we were like, you know what, this isn't really dubstep anymore. It's, it can be hip hop, it can be rock, it can be R&B, it can be pop, like, 
it's just the tempo and it's a groove that we're working on. I feel like the capabilities of <coughs> are within the digital realm, we're only just scratching the surface of what's actually possible. Now it's become accepted. Digital format was never really an acceptable form of art. You know, it's like you use Photoshop, you're, you're not an artist, you have to be a painter to be an artist. You use a laptop, you're not an artist, you have to play guitar. I, I think that's changing now. And I think that's what all this is a part of. And that's what I'm most excited about. I'm away to the beat going. You know, when you're just trying to be an artist, when you're trying to just write music and be as brave as you possibly can, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the, you know, in the real world, in your, your real world perceptions of stuff, like meeting, I've met one of the princes of Saudi Arabia, and he was a fan, and all these, these kind of things that, as a real world human being, it's like they blow your mind, and you kind of have to become quite disconnected with that, because that's not why I'm doing anything that I'm doing. Like when I'm in the studio, Flux Pavilion doesn't exist. You know, I'm just trying to create stuff. And then as soon as I've written something, as soon as I step out of the studio, I start thinking, shit, this would be really good for that. This would be, oh, if I push this, it's kind of, I have to, I feel like I have to disconnect myself with all of the real world madness to, for it to all make sense. Like, at the end of the day, it all boils down to just that one creative point, which is neither big nor small. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't exist on the realm of fame because it just it is what it is, it's a completely separate entity. And I, yeah, I try to re remain removed from that kind of world with my music. All right, au revoir. I have been Flux Pavilion, and this has been Noise Porn, the box that I'm in. Watch it again if you want, or don't, just do whatever you want. I'll see you in a bit.